This is True News. I'm Rick Wiles. Today is Monday, June 28, 2010. This will be one of the most important broadcasts in the 11-year history of True News. Please inform your friends and loved ones to listen. You have my permission to copy it, post it on other websites, or use any other method of distribution. Please get the message out. It is urgent. Mr. Matthew Simmons will join me in a few minutes to give us his expert analysis of the Gulf oil crisis. Mr. Simmons is one of the most respected figures in the oil industry. That's what makes his sober assessment so chilling. If this is your first time to hear True News, please visit our website, truenews.com, every weekday. True News, T-R-U-N-E-W-S, truenews.com. Mr. Matthew Simmons is on the telephone to discuss the ongoing calamity in the Gulf of Mexico. Mr. Simmons is the founder and former chairman of Simmons and Company International. He is a member of the National Petroleum Council and the CFR, and he's one of the world's leading advocates of peak oil. He is the author of the best-selling book, Twilight in the Desert, the coming Saudi oil shock in the world economy. Mr. Simmons... It's an honor to have you today. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I wish I had more pleasant news to share with you. Well, let's let's get into this uh, this calamity. You you've been a very outspoken um, person about the BP oil disaster, and I I've been closely monitoring your comments since April 20. Uh, you were you were criticized by a lot of people in May and early June for your estimates about how much oil is pouring into the Gulf, but. BP has revised their figures at least four times, so time has proven you correct. My, my question is, are BP a, and Washington telling the American people the truth about what's going on, or are they suppressing the facts? Well, for, first of all, I think my – my uh, l- 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 let me just back up and say that that uh, uh, on the morning of April 21st, when when we turned on the you know Morning Today show uh, – uh, is here in Maine, and uh, and I and we got this you know glaring report that there was a rig fire, and I saw the visual pictures of the Gulf of Mexico on fire, and one of the greatest rigs that that that, that has ever been built starting to bur- to melt. I said to my wife in the first ten seconds, I said, "This is not a rig fire. That rig has 700 gallons of diesel on board. This must be the biggest blow up we've ever had." Now you know I'm I'm kind of Fortunate or unfortunate of starting my career uh, accidentally and being an investment banker to the oil service industry uh, 45 days after the Santa Barbara oil spill. So, so blowouts have been kind of a you know a topic I wouldn't say near and dear to my heart. But but all all of the you know the uh, watching the evolution of Cameron Ironworks and Vetco and Vetco Gray and 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 Hydro is is to, to, Try to build bigger and bigger blowout preventers so that we didn't ever have blowouts again, and then we stopped ever drilling deep wells for a long, long period of time because they were too they were too expensive. And I thought to myself, you know, this isn't this isn't a rig fire. Who is? And then I realized within about 20 minutes that BP had created the illusion that, that because they they still control all the news, and they created the illusion this was a rig fire. Well, that was great for two days until the rig sank, but when the fire still went on, they then said, oh, we have a leak. And they blamed it on the riser. Now I know a lot about drilling risers because, again, we, we are, I help finance a lot of these companies that make drilling risers. Drilling risers are basically uh, uh, 22 and a half inches in circumference, and two thirds of it is, is is a plastic elastomer, so so that the drill string doesn't crack and break in currents. I thought, what what are these people talking about? Are they just idiots? And then within a, you know a day or so, I realized they're not idiots at all. They, they, they obviously cut. I mean, BP is in, infamous in the last 15 years, which used to be a really great company. But when John Brown came in and and pat himself on the back of being the biggest cost cutter in the world, he created a culture of basically pride of yourself on how much cost you can cut. And here they made the most egregious mistakes ever. And this is a well that should never have been drilled. And halfway through they should have quit. But they they were desperate to book prison reserves. And so they must have realized when the well blew out that they, that some people were going to have to go to jail unless they actually made a you know created the illusion that it was just a little leak coming from this riser, and that illusion is still alive and well today. Ten miles away from the riser, is is there are fumes coming.
coming up from the Gulf of Mexico from an open hole that most of the scientists now pretty well agree by the, by the spread of the oil lake has to be at least 120,000 barrels a day. But, but, but what's amazing is BP still, for, for, to give them credit, and, you know, they, they still basically have dominated the news, and the government uh, is just befuddled about what to do. I mean, I've, I've never met an, uh, Admiral uh, 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 Thad Allen, Allen, but I hear that he's one of the finest public mm -hmm. servants ever, but he doesn't know anything about this. So mm -hmm. we're, everybody is relying on BP for their information, and BP's lying through their teeth. You, we, you said that there's a second leak about 10 miles away? That's not, it's not a second leak. It's the blowout. That's the blowout. Yeah. Then what are they showing us? They're showing us. You have to visually picture a 22 and a half inch circumference piece of white pipe, and out of that is a little tiny crack, and out of that is some fumes that are going about three to four feet high. And they and they cleverly hired all the ROVs, which are the only things you can see. Uh, you know, in the Gulf of Mexico, to hang right around that thing. So, and it, it wasn't until finally these big nasty globs of slimy oil started showing up on beaches that the government sprung into action and said something must be going on we don't know about. And so, the National Oceanographic Atmospheric uh, NOAA, uh, you know, commissioned you know their 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 bevy of research vessels to start going out and doing what BP should have done from day one. Say, what is going on? And they started seeing these oil plumes. Okay, no. the, plumes, the plumes were so extensive that they finally put the finest research vessel we've ever made in America, the Thomas Jefferson, to work. Uh, and the Thomas Jefferson basically you know, had airship down in New Orleans to put on the vessel the finest recording instruments that Woods Hole has ever uh, had. And the Thomas Jefferson has that basically totally confirmed that the open hole has no casing left and that it's basically now, you know, by, by, by the extent of how wide the, the oil lake is, it's basically got to be about 120,000 barrels a day. And unfortunately, at, at about 4,500 feet water depth, uh, which you get frigid water, we have about a four to 500 foot, you know, lake of toxic oil. And the gases coming out of that are so lethal. It's, it's methane and butane and, and uh, the, uh, all, all the, it's worse than mustard gas. What are we looking at with these live webcams? What you're looking at is, the, is, the, is a little tiny leak in the riser. It's like a, it's like a leak in your radiator car. Mm -hmm. but, but by now, Washington certainly knows that this is not, the, this is not true. Well, I think Washington is at, in the last 10, 15 days has started to, you know, grasp the magnitude of how of, of, of this whole thing, and unfortunately, they're having to they're having to tiptoe lightly through this because I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a fourth generation Republican, but I can't tell you how annoyed I am about the Republican Party politicizing this and making Obama look like a communist because he actually is beating up on BP. BP okay. ought to have been the senior executive of BP ought to be in jail right now. Mm -hmm. are, I think there are going to be manslaughter charges come out of this. Are, are you saying that, um, I mean, in your opinion, you, you think that BP has succeeded in hoodwinking Obama and most of the federal government up until now? Until about, until about two weeks ago, I think they, they almost pulled off the biggest scam in the history of the world. Now, when... When, when when the news finally started getting through to to the White House, uh, give give Obama his due. I mean, he he was the one that basically demanded that that the chairman of BP and the and the CEO of BP come to Washington D.C. and said, "We want twenty billion dollars of your cash." But why did he wait so long to have a meeting? But because they didn't. They they, they, they trusted BP. Well, they allowed you can, in benefit of hindsight. You can say oh, that was stupid. Yeah. Why would anyone trust BP? But one one of the oddities, of, in my opinion, is why was I the only person that was willing to speak up? Because I took a lot of crap. I know you did. I know you did. Well, how? Um, why has BP been allowed to run the show? Well, because they because they created the illusion that that that, that they they had the they were the only company in the world that had the technology to know how to solve this. 
you got to realize that there there have only been uh, you know a handful of, of, of offshore wells that have been drilled to this, these water depths and then going down three miles beyond that. And so BP had the it, it, it's, it's a it's a bad analogy because it pales in comparison, but it's a little bit like when the Challenger blew up. Mm-hmm. And now with the benefit of hindsight, we go back and say, well. We got so we got so lax and casual about how easy this was that we basically didn't realize that O-rings basically can can freeze in in cold weather and then they blow up. But literally, BP created the illusion that they were the only company in the world that had the technology to control this, and the government believed them. Mm-hmm. Now we should go back and say, well, how stupid! We should have elected the president of the United States who was an expert in blow-up prevention. But you know who we could have elected? John McCain, who said, "Drill, baby, drill." Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have been dismayed over the way Washington has just stood back and allowed BP to run the show. Well, uh, you know, the, the, the problem is, and I've had a lot of conversations with in the last two weeks with some senior people in, in our government, the problem is that there's, they still basically can't believe that BP, that they, that, I mean, BP has BP is actually pulled off an amazing public relations job. Yes. I'm saying that we're, we're, without us, no, I mean, not, no one in Washington has any idea what this is all about, and, and certainly nobody in the point. news media either, because you don't you don't see anybody in the national news media asking them some serious questions. Well, I, I tell you, I, I give a lot of credit to the to the media because, again, they've given me more airtime in the last, unfortunately, in the last sixty days than I've ever had in my lifetime to get this message out. Mm-hmm. But it, but it's but it's interesting that, for instance. CNN uh, uh, sent the first crew out to be on the Thomas Jefferson. And then they sent a video team to the ROV Center in Houma, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So I get, a, I get a call from the person directing all this saying, our television crew is actually at the ROV Center, and BP is saying there is the blood preventer. So the, we, you know, the idea that, there, that we don't know where the blood preventer is, you're looking at it. So she said, do you, do you believe us? I said, would you ask your crew to ask BP? Do they really believe that this little box on this 22 and a half inch uh, riser weighs 325 tons and is five feet, five stories high? And they said, "Well, that's confidential information." All right. So you you're saying that where the the main leak is at. It's there, 10 miles away. 10 miles away, and there's no casing left. So basically, nope, we just hole. we just got an open hole in the seafloor. Yep, and we and the, and the only way that anyone has ever dealt with plugging an open hole of this magnitude was what the Russians did five times successfully in the early 70s. They they created a small uh, uh, low grade nuclear device and they inserted it right down the well bore and finally detonated it and it fused the rock into glass and shut it in. And if we don't do that, we will never shut this in. Do you think Obama is seriously considering that option? I'm sure there must be. All right, so if we have 100,000... But, but two weeks ago, they still believed BP that was a... The, 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 I mean, BP every day puts out a press release saying, we captured 22,000 barrels of oil. Well, most of that is actually water. If we have 100,000 barrels a day... 120,000. All right, so 120,000. So it's over 3 million barrels a month pouring yeah. out. And the estimates are, what, a billion barrels that are in it? Well, they, they, there's unfortunately, what BP was, why BP was going for, for broke on this is that they believed it was a 25 billion barrel oil fill. 25 billion? If it were a billion barrel oil fill, they, they've lost money on it. So if we don't if we don't shut it in, then basically we're going to create the. I mean, I think probably unfortunately that that maybe half the Gulf of Mexico is now a Dead Sea. There's no option left. You you have said that at least forty percent of of the Gulf is now covered by oil. Yeah, but it's way down. It's, it's forty five hundred feet below the surface. So so all we're seeing is about you know maybe way less than one percent showing up so far. But but the hurricane. I mean, you know, we all we, we all should pray that the hurricane ends, but it's not going to. Mm-hmm. And the swath, basically, I mean, it was amazing. Yet yeah, last evening, the the, you know, the news reports were all saying, "Oh, it's going to basically, you know, hit close to, you know, way down into Mexico." So we're spared. Well, 
Now they're saying there's a 50-50 chance that it could actually be in Corpus Christi or Brownsville or higher. Well, you know, I know enough about hurricanes because they've been very instrumental on on the impact of the drilling activities in the Gulf of Mexico. We have no idea yet. I mean, this hurricane could basically hit New Orleans. We yeah. don't know that for a day or two. That's right. That's right. But they're... what it's going to do, it's going to bring to shore the toxic oil that we've only seen 1% of. And what really worries me the most is that that stuff is so poisonous that we should be p passing out gas masks like crazy. I'm told that all the, ocean, all the ocean, oceanographic people on these research vessels are now wearing gas masks. We've heard reports of methane gas levels at one million times normal. Yeah, I mean, more. I think the New York Times reported a few days ago that there's been more methane released from this than the history of the world. And that stuff in your lungs is worse than the mustard gas. Oh, so if you think Saddam Hussein, you know, did a bunch of people, this is the Saddam Hussein, you know, squared. Is there a danger of a massive methane gas eruption? Well, yeah, I mean, if the, hur if the hurricane brings this stuff to shore, you know, I mean, I, I, I keep saying that we really basically should be at least have in, have in place an evacuation plan to to evacuate all the citizens of the Gulf Coast. So, so you, you're not even talking about um, the seafloor erupting with a methane gas. Oh no, no, I'm talking about, talking the, about the, that's already there. the methane that's already released. You're saying that, that that this is so deadly that if it's brought in by a hurricane, if if, if the if the top, if the four to five hundred feet lake, you know, gets tossed up to the surface. Then, then it, it could be the greatest, you know, nightmare we've ever seen. Worse than any war we've ever had. What's the danger of of a massive methane gas explosion from from the seafloor? I don't. I don't. I actually think the explosion would be good news. I think the problem is that we is it, the is people breathing it into their lungs and dying. Mm-hmm. But being asphyxiated, the the, yeah, the methane yeah. replacing the oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, which um, when I, I was doing some research and I, you know, I came across the story out of Cameroon, Africa, 1986, the lake, yeah. uh, the methane gas bubble came up yeah. and killed 1,800 people instantly. Yeah. And how big is Cameroon? That's not that big. <laughs> Relative to the people that live, you know, across the Gulf Coast. Do you, do you have you have any estimate? I mean, it, it, with hurricane winds, how? Well, what, what we know about hurricanes is that what it, you know, is that they stir up. The, I mean, one of the things that's odd about the Gulf of Mexico is how little we really know about it, because we, you know, in the shallow parts of the Gulf of Mexico, it's very it's very warm water, uh, but when you get about 20 miles offshore, it turns into being like the Caribbean, and when you get two or three hundred feet down, it turns into cold water. When you're down at basically the, you know, in, in the outer continental shelf, down to 5,000 feet, which is where the well bore begins, it's basically 37 degree water. So it's so it's frigid water. So the reason we've never seen this oil lake is it's basically it's a it's a it's a bed of tar. But what the hurricanes do is they churn up the cold water, and for, that's what saved Houston's bacon when when after Katrina is that Rita basically stopped because it was, it was when they got closer to shore, there was all this cold water. Well, now we're not going to have cold water. We're going to have deadly gases, de deadly oil. And, and and we know that that um, hurricanes definitely stir uh, the currents on the on the bottom of the sea. Yeah, I because mean, we, we, we've only got about a hundred year history of that. Yeah, because they're they're you know scientists have been warning about the danger of of, of hurricanes uh, uh, breaking uh, the oil pipelines on yeah. on the Gulf yeah. floor. So, so you're saying uh, the, the real danger is stirring up this massive uh, lake of oil yeah, and we've rising to the top. A fraction of so far. And so that oil rising to the top is going to release all these deadly yeah. chemicals, which are going yeah. to be blown into the Gulf. Yeah, well, we're going to paint the Gulf. If, if a hurricane basically comes on shore and brings this stuff up, unless it doesn't exist. Now, if BP's right, it won't exist. But well, the odds that, of them being right today is, is zero. Or at least telling the truth. Um, well, t what's the difference between being right, right and telling the truth? That's right. Especially you know, if you're dead, you're dead. Uh, it, it, have you talked to any experts about how far these gases could travel? 
Well, it, the uh, what what the one of the senior research people on board the Thomas Jefferson uh, told me is that they think basically it's it's about 120 miles width wide. Now, and it and and the and the, it starts at about 4,500 feet under the under the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, and it goes about 400 feet deep. Okay, but when with the hurricane winds, do you have do you have a, an estimation of how far inland these no, gases can be idea, carried? No, but, 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 but again, I mean, you know, assume it's just 10 miles, it's a disaster. Yes. But if it gets in, for instance, if it gets in the in, in the through the Bolivar Strait, which is the little, little tiny gap between Galveston Island and Bolivar Island, it, they, then we poison the ship channel and we shut down. You know, one of America's most important energy sources. If it gets into the intercoastal waterways of Louisiana, it shuts that down. So, about a, about a week ago, there was a little tiny news report that came across either Reuters or Bloomberg, saying that there are 18 power plants along the Gulf Coast that have already done their emergency preparedness to shut down if this gooey stuff that's now showing up in the beaches of Louisiana and 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 and, and Florida get get within a half mile because it would if there's such water hogs it would shut them down we could have the biggest blackout in american history and also a fuel shortage at the same time and there's also a water desalinization plant in tampa yeah so one, it, one of the one of the interesting pieces of news that someone told me last week from fort lauderdale is that the fishermen on the east coast of florida are seeing species of fish that they've never seen before they've all fled the gulf of mexico there's also a massive fish kill uh, at Jacksonville, huh? In the St. John River, and 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 really? why, why? I wonder. I don't know, and because they said they, they've died of oxygen depletion, and and the experts say it doesn't make sense. Yeah, that, I've never. The guy that told me this was a was publishes a, a, a newsletter, and and he said that he said there's been the, the, the fishermen around around uh, Fort Lauderdale. Are seeing you know species of fish that have never been in the east coast of Florida before. So if if so you're, maybe it's the migration of these fish mm -hmm. that have already been poisoned. So have we lost the Gulf of Mexico? Is it is it over? I, well, I I hope not, but I think the odds are pretty high we have. That it becomes the Dead Sea. Yeah. And and unfortunately, that was a term that I used about three days into this and got so severely criticized for. Being a sort of a Stephen King. Well, this thing continues on and on and on. What are we into now? Day, what, what is well, we've this? Got, we've got, we've got, we got to do. We got to basically shut the well in. And the only re way we're going to do that, in my opinion, from and again, I'm not an expert in this, but I but I've read a whole lot. Is it is and you know it sounds like a you know Doctor Strangelove sort of scenario. But in fact, you know, I grew up in Utah, and and during you know for 20 years, we did underground hydrogen bomb testing a mile under a mile under underground, and it you know about 100 miles north of Las Vegas, it never even set off a tremor. Mm -hmm. This is three miles under the seabed. Mm -hmm. But it just it's just such a scary sound that I think that 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 you know there's that I mean oh boy I'm, I'm I sympathize with the people in Washington right now, and I think it's so. Unfair that they're being criticized, saying you know that, that this is their fault. Well, I don't think it's their fault. I just, I'm just, again, I'm just uh, dismayed that they have been so willing to believe BP. Well, you know, BP, I mean, BP, again, there were there were only a handful. I'll tell you what would have been great is if four or five other pe senior people in the industry, like senior people, but I mean, why should the government say there's this retired investment banker that now lives in Maine that's talking about this? And he must be right, and the whole rest of the industry must be wrong. Mm -hmm. That's pretty far fetched. I mean, talk about you know the, I mean, somebody crying wolf about weapons of mass destruction. But had had Rex Tillerson, for instance, and I'm, I'm, I'll single him out because he finally last week, you know, got praised for being so bold. He was only bold because he got subpoenaed. Uh, but, what, what about Goldman Sachs and Tony Hayward selling their uh, a lot of their stock? Uh, a month before the the blast, the, the Well, the again, you know, I mean, BP has, has pulled off so many. You know, I mean, the, the, if you go back and look at their 15-year history, when John Brown took over, I mean, they turned the North Slope into a rust pit. 
You know, Alaska Pipeline is basically a third now full of sludge because of BP. Uh, they, you know, they, 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 the loss of lives and people that didn't die will never work again on Texas City was just tragic, but it was never their fault. It was always someone else's fault. So they, they got consumed with the idea of cost cutting. They became addictive to it. Uh, in, in the very first days, the, the BP said they talked about a methane gas bubble coming up that set off this uh, yeah. explosion? Yeah. Was that correct? Oh, yeah, it was absolutely correct. What mm -hmm. they didn't tell people is that basically uh, it, blew the, it blew the block protector off. It's the, we still have no idea where the block protector, the BLP even is, because they, they immediately crowded every ROV, which are these these, these, these fabulous machines that Oceanarian own eight and manage the other four, uh, and 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 said stay right on this riser, so that it wouldn't actually be allowed to go anyplace else. I I assume you don't have much uh, hope that the the uh, relief wells are going to work. Well, with no casing in the hole, I think most experts and there you know we, we've had so few blots in the, in the last forty years that there are not a lot of people still alive that understand this stuff. But I don't I don't think anyone that really understands this thinks there's a chance of actually having a slant relief will work if there's no casing. But a relief, these relief wells are, what, two months away? Well, at best. At best. So two to three months. But, but, but the odds of them happening are somewhere between 5% and zero. All right, so it, but is, is Mr. Obama going to wait the uh, 60 to 90 days and give but BP? You know, I, my, is he, is he going to give them the time to do this and then say, this didn't work either? Well, you know, my guess is that they must be the, the the experts in Washington are just going doing overtime now to say what is going on. You know, our, 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 take politics out of this. Our government basically is not prepared to deal with a crisis. We just we just systematically don't elect a government to deal with crisis unless you're in the middle of a war. Mm -hmm. And and a hydrocarbon crisis, we haven't had one since the. You know, the two hydrocarbon crises we had were in 73 and 79, and they were basically caused by blockage in the Middle East. So they're not, they're not a wide body of people in Washington, D.C. that understand this stuff. There is a wide body of people in Washington, D.C. called the Energy Lobby that are basically creating the illusion this is a big green conspiracy and BP is still a great company. And you only have to look at people like Joe Barton, who was so critical of the, the government's wasting money investigating a great company. If you lived along the Gulf, what would you be doing right now? Either evacuating or getting a gas mask. Wow, those are two wonderful options. Yeah, very sad. I think this is probably the saddest story I've ever even read about. And this this could this could make the Civil War look like a trivial incident in U.S. history. It's pretty dramatic, Mr. Simmons. It's really, I mean... It, well, you just have you... to add the facts up. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, and say, how many people actually live along the Gulf Coast within 20 miles? I don't even know what the number is, but is it, is it 10 million or 20 million people? Because you're talking about Brownsville all the way down to, 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 to the Florida Keys. There, there's a lot of speculation... Uh, about a, uh, a methane gas bubble-induced uh, tsunami. Is, is that a concern? I, I, I don't know. I think if it were, we'd already had one. I think the hurricane, and, you know, what's interesting is that from, there's sort of, I mean, about eight weeks ago, the, the Colorado State uh, 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 University of uh, Weather hurricane experts, you know, said that because of the of the uh, heat of the water of the Gulf of Mexico, we're we're probably going to have the highest hurricane season we've had in 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, there's the illusion that Alex is the only hurricane we're going to have. Now, Joe Bastardi was here a few weeks ago. He he says there's there's a possibility this may be the all time record. Yeah, I mean, and it's all because of the temperature of the Gulf of Mexico. And, Ironically, it was a year ago that the Colorado State experts said we're probably not going to have a hurricane this year because the Gulf of Mexico is cool. 
and they were right. That's correct. Um, this is amazing. I, I'm, I'm pondering all this, um, um, what this means for the people. We have a lot of listeners along the Gulf Coast, and, I, and I, I'm thinking about that well, right I'm, now. I'm, I can't tell you how sympathetic I am to all of them. Because, you know, they, I mean, you know, they, these are the pioneers of offshore oil and gas. Mm-hmm. And the pioneers of our fishing industry, and our, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, I mean, this, you know, some of the great patrons of the United States. What about the dispersants? What, um... Well, that was an, that's another ugly story. Mm-hmm. Is a is a BP's assumption, and and again, I I think this was actually a legitimate assumption because they were hoping like crazy that they would that this oil, giant oil field would be Louisiana light because that's the primary crude grade in these deep water fields. Mm-hmm. Which, is, which is very high-quality oil. What they actually unfortunately found was a really un- ugly form of crude laden with a bunch of, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but aspatines. It's what make asphalt comes mm-hmm. from. And so if it had been Louisiana light, it all would have come to the surface. So as a result of that, they said as long as we get dispersants and, and spray them, we'll put the whole thing out. Well, the what they found was we don't have a big warehouse full of dispersants other than Nalco, who's a first-rate, especially chemical company, had a best-selling dispersant uh, that for, 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 for spills. And five years ago, the European Union banned it, it was sort of like DDT, saying it's too toxic. So what BP found was a whole warehouse full of this dispersant that they could buy cheap. And I guess they assumed that it, wasn't, it wouldn't be toxic to the Gulf of Mexico and it was just the the European Union being too cautious. So what they sprayed along the surface didn't have anything to do with the poison that screwed on the bottom, but it just added. But it's like a sneeze compared to with the flu. But it, just, it didn't it didn't do any good. It just added, you know, harm. Well, what are we going to have with the hurricanes picking up the dispersants in the sea mist and blowing well, don't it? Don't worry about the dispersants. They're 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 minor compared to the toxic crude. And you're, you're comparing it to mustard gas. Yeah, well, that's what that's. I mean, again, I don't I don't understand this stuff. I just have mm-hmm. a, a remarkable group of scientists that since I've become sort of a magnet, I get a lot of information over the transom. Some say, you know, Mr. Simmons, can, let me tell you one more piece of bad news. Methane is highly combustible. Is is there any possibility of of lightning igniting well, what, the methane? What, what is what's What's going on right now, according to the people on board the Thomas Jefferson, is that is that you know uh, the, the the cauldron about ten miles away from from the Rogers leak is basically you know in, you know is like the is just a t- total furnace of, of 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 fire coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. They were fi- the Thomas Jefferson was finally allowed two days ago uh, to get within one kilometer. And when they first went out with all this stuff, that NERDA, which is the National Disaster Recovery Administration, which I'd never heard of their name, or limited them to, to to staying 10 miles away from the cauldron because of risk of loss of life. And finally, they negotiated to get three miles. And finally, last week, they got within one kilometer, so they can finally start to, you know, you know try to figure out where exactly is the well bore because there's no there's no metal left so they really don't even know exactly where the well bore is they know they know within one kilometer did you say that there's there's fire coming out of this? oh yeah okay several years ago uh, one, and I remember reporting a story in the program that, that, that scientists had discovered asphalt volcanoes mm-hmm in, in the uh, Gulf of Mexico yeah. is, is there a possibility that BP drilled into a volcano they, they could have actually. I mean, not drilled into a volcano, but they could have. You know, I was I was at a at a uh, speaking at a dinner in early uh, December for one of the major tanker uh, uh, organizations, and they invited all, once a year they invite all their best customers to come for an appreciation, and they and the, and the head of the shipping department at Petrobras in Brazil was supposed to be there, but he got the flu. So the, one of the top senior executives in their exploration program was just happened to be in Houston, so he came in his place. And I was sitting next to him at dinner. I said, tell me about the Santos Basin, the Tupi field. 
I mean, how, how, I mean, is, is that as big as people are all saying? He's, you know, we don't have a clue yet. He said that is the riskiest project that's ever been done. He said, it, first of all, the, the, it's about 300 kilometers from the nearest shore base, so just delivering the, the, you know, the, the daily materials is a chore. Then you get materials on a drill ship, and the drill bit goes down through seven to 8,000 feet of water, and then it starts penetrating through the crust, and you basically go down through 20,000 feet of salt. And you get below the salt, and you're nearing the center of the earth. He said the first three well, test wells at Tupi had an average uh, temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And what some of us are worried about is could we actually be penetrating the crust? And if we do, we'll create the largest man-made island in the history of the world. So this could have actually been penetrating, you know, close to penetrating the crust. And this is starting to turn into a sci-fi nightmare. Excuse me? I said this is starting to turn into a science fiction nightmare now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine, you know, someone, if someone had written this up as a book, it would have been so incredible that no one would have read it. I'm not a scientist, but throughout this entire ordeal, um, the thought of a volcano has been on my mind. Mm -hmm. now, I have asked numerous guests. I've had geologists and other scientists on the program. I've asked them the same question. No one has really said it's a serious possibility. But I, I, something inside of me says this is far worse than any of us realize right now. You know, the, the, uh, the, deep, the deepest well that's ever been drilled, in the, at least in the U.S. history, uh, was ba basically back in 1972 or 73, and it was something like the Big Bertha or something like that. It was in, in the Anadarko area of Oklahoma. And they went down to 33,000 feet vertical depth, and for about three days they got the most high, the highest quality uh, uh, condensate ever, and then all of a sudden molten sulfur started coming out. And, 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 and several people on the crew said, God, this is the earth burping. What is the depth? I've heard different figures. What is the depth of this? 23,000 feet vertical. 23,000? Yep. 5,000 feet of water and then 18,000 feet of you know, below the seabed. Okay, so the total is 23,000 yeah. feet. But, you know, what? what's also interesting is that the, the crust is not uniform. The crust is sort of like a, you know, a, you know, an, an elongated eggshell. Mm hmm But there is fire coming out of this hole. Yeah. I have mentioned this on the program several times. I mean, it's just my own hunch that there was fire coming out of this thing. Again, I'm going back to Washington. They have to know this. Well, I think, I, I mean, first of all, they, I think they're, uh, they're, my guess is their learning curve has gone up a hundredfold in the last ten days. But again, give BP their, their due, for about, for about 45 to 50 days, they were totally in control of the news. And they, and, and one of the, one of the interesting commentaries I had with a good friend of mine here, a neighbor, uh, Major, Major General Doug O'Dell, retired from the Marines, who's a very close friend of Admiral uh, Allen, and I, and I said, Doug, he, we, someone in the government needs to kick BP out. He said, well, the problem is that, that no one in the government uh, you know, has any idea what this is all about. Without BP's technology, we don't know what to do. I said, BP has no technology. They're making it up. It's the service company. He said, well, what they're telling the, what they're telling the government is the service companies were responsible for the problem. I mean, look, look, go back, go back to Iraq and the weapons of mass destruction. I mean, you know that that was. Tri I mean, how much misinformation was coming? That was trivial compared to this. Mm -hmm. But this would be like the like the United Nations hydrocarbon expert saying, "Trust me, I I have all the technology," and then the United States government saying, "Oh no, we don't believe you." And, and BB has also been very effective in suppressing. Or restraining state and local officials from doing anything. I've, I've oh, seen extremely. I mean, numerous extremely reports extremely. of officials. I don't understand this, but yesterday's New York Times had an article of fact that most of the boats they hired were pleasure boats versus versus fishing boats. I guess they got them cheaper. 
So uh, as far as a lot of the cleanup operation, is, is it, is it uh, smoke and mirrors? Is it just uh, yeah, yeah, it's smoke and mirrors. So what is BP really doing? Are they, re are they trying to figure out what to do? Or, no, or? I think they're trying to basically create the illusion. They still, they still are trying to create the illusion that's all coming from this riser. Mm -hmm. And they know that that riser basically is... It, <coughs> excuse me. That's right. It's, it's a mile long. Uh, you know, seven inch annular that was jam packed with condensate, and it's only three or four feet high in the plume. But they're, they've they've created the illusion that that's the spill. There's still a lot of people that believe that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I bet probably 99 percent of America believe mm -hmm. that. And and last week when they said uh, the robot uh, had had uh, compromised um, the uh, the well, it's uh, all it's all a bunch of baloney. They're just making stuff up as they go. What was also interesting is when the when NOAA finally saw all these you know ugly you know streaks of goo showing up on the shores, that's when they put the research vessels to work. And BP strenuously objected to that, saying this there is no there are no plumes. We investigated that. This is just a diversion. Well, they were that was the cover up. If Washington has been hoodwinked and they wake up and they realize what BP is doing, uh, they're going to have to slap some handcuffs on some executives. I, I would think so. I mean, I think you're looking at manslaughter charges, frankly. I mean, 11, 11 people are dead, and maybe a lot more people are going to die. So I think I think if, they're, if they don't basically charge some people with manslaughter, they're going to be you know, highly remiss. Mm -hmm. Also, I saw a report in, in the immediate aftermath of the of the explosion that the survivors were taken somewhere and kept there until they signed uh, legal documents yep. that yep. they would not speak yep they also had all of all the service companies uh, uh, in, including board members of the service companies sign a confidentiality agreement that they couldn't seek so they they actually put in place you know I mean if you think that Watergate was something so BP was moving quickly in the they hours were moving after. Very swiftly. Okay, but apparently they knew something in Ju in February because the the report that we've seen is that they 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 notified the Minerals Management Service in I think on February 13 that they had a problem. Well, they they uh, that, uh, this this is something I didn't know until about two weeks ago. I think I've been following this as intensely as anybody. They actually you know were were had had been drilling for two or three months. And they did, and they decided that they didn't have enough, a robust enough piece of equipment. So, they, and then, then I, this is all speculation. But I think what happened is that Thunder Horse, which is an enormously large amount of BP's production, uh, went into a steep decline, which they still haven't report, announced to their shareholders. And they, they, they then decided they had to go back on Maconda and prove up that, so they could actually not write off a bunch of proven reserves. They went back to this troubled well, and it was a problem well from day one. Mm -hmm. Going back to the, um, the the mustard gas mixture and and, and the uh, hurricane season, uh, do, do you think the federal government will um, respond before the worst case scenario, or are they going to I, wait I, well, until the, there's the worst a case scenario is going to be on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's kind of too late. Mm -hmm. But if we're if we're spared and the hurricane actually hits below Brownsville, what we need to do is say, well, you know, we were we were given a miracle blessing, and let's now make sure we don't relax. You know what's going to happen if the federal government tells everyone along the Gulf Coast you got to get out of here? Well, I know what I know what happened when Mayor Bill White uh, uh, tried to evacuate Houston because of Rita. Uh, within three or four hours, we ran out of gasoline. Mm -hmm. And so when when Ike was coming, the, the the city of the greater Harris County did a far more controlled evacuation plan and asked most people to stay there. So we should have been planning this, but we don't. We've never had this kind of emergency before, so we're really caught flat-footed. Mm -hmm. Have Have any of the scientists told you how long-lasting? Are the effects of the gas if it comes inland? Are we talking hours, days? Is this well, I, th I, th I, 
here, here's what I heard from the, one of the senior people on board the Thomas Jefferson. Is he said when they when they got restricted within to stay on this, this three mile ring from the cauldron, they were in, and they were very carefully measuring, putting these these you know careful testing to see to measure the you know what what is this crude. They were in fine shape for two thirds because they were downwind. When they finally got the last top, they they got into upwind, and within 20 minutes, they all got sick. So they spent several days at the home of medical center. Mm-hmm. That's 20 minutes. All I can say to the folks living along the Gulf, and if you have family or friends along the Gulf of Mexico, please take this program seriously. Take this warning well, first seriously. First of all, it's just, I mean... I don't know how many gas masks we even have in the mm-hmm. United States, but I mean the cheapest insurance policy anyone could do is get gas masks. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if you're it's a legal requirement if you're on a, the rig floor of of a, of a dr- drilling a well where there's the presence of a low level of hydrogen sulfide, you have to actually have a gas mask on your body because an alarm goes off and you have 20 seconds to put it on. So and we have, we have a lot of scientific history of how lethal this stuff is. Yes. And as we all know, um, it, there's not going to be any warning uh, no. for the people. I mean, that was the tragedy on, on the, on the, on the Transocean rig is they had one second before it blew out. And, and, the, and I'll tell you what, the heroes on Transocean, the, the, the I don't know if you've seen the, the, any of the videos of the, of the widow of the guy that came home from, on shore leave and, and said there's something going so wrong on this, I'm, I'm not sure I'll, uh, I'll come back alive. So he drew up a will and, and told his wife how to raise the kids. And he was the person that basically stayed on, you know, ran the joystick and, and moved the rig 1,500 feet away from the cauldron so that 121 people could jump off. And then he burned to death. Mm-hmm. Now, when BP basically uh, announced last week that told all their vendors that once this is over, they're going to all be sued for gross negligence. I mean, that guy, that one individual, should get a Congressional Medal of Honor. Yes, I did see this 60-minute uh, interview with the with the man yeah. who who jumped 90 feet into yeah. the, into the uh, oil. But see, uh, if, that, if, they, if that if the guy had not moved the rig. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, a third of a mile away, they would have burned to death. We're we're on the east coast of Florida. Do the people living on the east coast of Florida have anything to fear about? I, this? I would I would think that the east coast of Florida is spared because, first of all, the unfortunately the loop currents that loop in the Gulf of Mexico, and and the idea that it's going to get in the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream basically. Goes from the surface of the of the of the uh, of Atlantic Ocean down about a thousand feet, and then you get into placid water. So, in, in a funny sense, it would probably be a blessing in disguise if you could disperse this out of the Gulf of Mexico. But I think the East Coast of Florida is going to be in fine shape. All right. I wish we could continue, but we are out of time. Um, my guess. Well, I'm today... glad you're doing this story. This is this is this is truly a tragic, tragic. You know, piece of American history. It is, and it's going to change our country. Yep, profoundly. It's going to change our nation. Uh, my guest today, Mr. Matthew Simmons, uh, the founder and chairman of uh, Simmons and Company International. Uh, Mr. Simmons, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming on the program, and um, we'll be glad to have you back on. Uh, well, I wish, I'd love, love to come on, you know, sometime and say, boy, I was wrong. Yes, sir. Me too. Me too. Um, but right now, uh, right now, you've been right throughout this uh, crisis. Sadly. Yes. So thank you for coming on the program, and uh, please continue speaking out. A lot of people are counting on you to, uh, to give us the facts.